The monsoon rain has started here. An abundance of trees and plants have grown. This is Dofar Governorate, which is located in the southern part of the Sultanate of Oman in the southeast of the Arabian Peninsula. In the summer, there is an excessive heat in most part of the Arab world, but here, in the Dofar mountain range and the nearby coastal areas, we enjoy exceptionally rainy summers, stretching from the Samhan Mountains in the east to the Alkamar Mountains in the west. Dofar maintains consists of biological diversity of high mountains and deep valleys where there are running waterfalls and continuously flowing springs of water. These areas abound with livestock, especially camels, which play a significant role in the lives of people here. The brook that flows from the Razat water spring is the location of this story's beginning. It is locally called Katul al Ebel, which means the grazing of camels. It is derived from the locally called Al Katla, which is the season of grazing for the camels for the end of the Karif monsoon. This time of the year, mentioned in the poetry, referred to locally as Serb. From the ancient times, the tribes in Dofar have mutually agreed to this system of herding and adhered to it in their geographical region. In the Serb season, when leading the camels on the trek into the mountainous regions gets underway, pasture lands in the mountains and valleys are fertile and rich, as seen in the foliage of trees and plants. al Kutla, or the herding journey lasts for more than a month in the valleys and mountains where the herdsmen live with their camels for the duration of the season. It may seem impossible at first as thousands of camels congregate together from the Hamran plains to drink from this rivulet before commencing their ascent to these mountains with their lush valleys. This is the specific day to start the herding journey that passes through the number of valleys and culminates in the Janine Valley. On the precise day of departure, everyone joins with his camel to start the journey, together in a symphony in which the groans of camels rhyme with the chirping of birds. The camels press it out of the responsibility of everyone. All the herdsmen become one family despite the fact that they belong to different tribes. In this setting, cooperation and brotherhood prevail. Here, we witness a perfect harmony between the people and their camels in their natural environment. The hills, the mountains, the valleys, We can describe the Dofari herdsman, physical appearance, as average height and slender with smaller size heads. In regard to the typical personality, they exhibit patience and endurance. They enjoy a high level of tolerance and understanding. They have strength and valor. Their energy is wondrous and they have a great will and lofty spirits to tackle difficult situations. I'm not
A group of men, along with a younger man, are heading to the spot which is intended for resting. This spot is called the Camel's Kneeling Place. These men carry their luggage by themselves and not on their camel's back. This is because camels are of great value in their lives and as a result, they highly admire their camels for their important position and deeply rooted history. These camels have carried lots of heavy loads in the past and now it is time to honor them. Therefore, at this time, they don't place loads on these camels as a means of demonstrating honor for these creatures which are mentioned in the Holy Quran when God cited their creation as an example of His greatness. Thus, these camels are considered as an asset, a symbol of pride, glory, and honor. This status is not only applicable to the countrymen of Dofar who are camel owners, but this is also prevalent in most parts of the vast Arab world. Sometimes these young men face the challenges. For example, this baby camel is being pushed to catch up with the progressing herd, but the offspring is resisting them, wanting to go back to the water thinking that its mother is still there. And because of the large numbers of camels which are mixed together, they are difficult to distinguish and reach. And there is no alternative except pressing on despite the difficulty of the topography. Here is the resting area. Here is the camel's kneeling spot. These young people have arrived carrying water and food to prepare the resting place and cook the food before the arrival of the camels and their accompanying herdsmen. The unique aspect of the life of these herdsmen in Dofar still holds much originality. Not much has changed in their lifestyle as a result of their keen interest in their customs and traditions. We have had a conversation about what is going on during the trip. Some of the men are explaining to us the task and responsibilities that fall on their shoulders. What pleases the herdsmen and makes them happy is witnessing the fertile pasture lands following the monsoon rains, now covered with grass, and seeing their camels strolling over the green carpet resulting from the monsoon season. This light in their eyes exceeds anything else in its beauty and value. How proud they are when the people come to enjoy the scene of God's gifts. These men are used to shepherding their cattle in remote areas when solitude has become good company. Walking for long distances does not affect their courage and determination. They are in constant travel and labor, and their main interest is shepherding the camels, training them and leading them to fertile pasture lands. This is the arrival to Janine Valley, which is considered a natural reserve and a camel's pasture. It splits the mountains and has bounty of trees and plants and abounds in natural life. 
This is Sheikh Ahmed bin Baka giving his orders, asking one of the young men to milk the camels and serve the milk to the guests who have now arrived to visit the residents of this valley. The life of the people here is organized around a list of strict rules which centralize the values of strength, courage, honesty, pride, and hospitality. This is the dominant way of life for the people in these areas going back thousands of years. The night has now begun. The camels are being milked and the fire pits are lit to serve the guests. <laughs> During the monolith lights in the valley, the people enjoy listening to the nana and the newly composed free poetry. <laughs> The herdsmen don't like anyone to surpass or exceed them in the qualities of pride. They always compete in generosity, courage and patience. When the guests leave, the locals meet to discuss sheep herding for the following day and the places to which the camels are going to be directed. And by dawn, after the group prayer, the fire is lit for heating and to make morning tea as well as preparations for a new day. And the sun rises, the herding starts. And this is known locally as Lahat, which means sheep herding in the early morning when the herdsmen head for the most fertile pastures. Thousands of camels have gathered here, and one of the obstacles is the difficulty in reaching the camel that is designated for milking because of the huge number of camels and the vast area of the valley. After milking the camels, the milk is collected and people drink it in significant amounts for its nutritious and healthy benefit. This is because camels graze natural vegetation and don't feed on mass-produced fodder. Saghu, or the Dofari Botan tree, is a leafy tree that grows along the coastline of Dofar. It is the most widespread and the most used tree. It also remains green the longest, is the best for grazing, shadiest, and the most beautiful leaves. The camel's long neck helps it to reach the high branches of the saghut. There's a wide variety of birds in the area. Some of these birds are considered 
as good friends to the camels as they help the camels to get rid of some harmful insects, such as the tick, a small blood-sucking insect. It burrows into camel skin, especially in the lower leg, fetlock area, udder, tail base, and hair, and the bottom of the feet. The camel's owner checks regularly for these insects and removes them. The camel is one of the animals that harbors great love of the people, and in return we see that camels are strongly attached to their owners. A camel doesn't allow anyone except its owner to come close to its baby because it loves and trusts its owner. Therefore, it doesn't get nervous and follows its young calmly. The camel is known as heat in local language. It is smart by instinct and has in it feelings. It shows compassion towards its caretaker the same way she feels towards her offspring, or even more so. The camel has achieved a great position in the hearts of the owners. They have always competed in their admiration for the camels. Camels range along valley accompanied by their herdsmen from north and then back to the south to spend the night in the same camp. What is the impetus that compels this people to live here in the modern age of technology and leave behind the comfort of contemporary life? Although most people prefer to live in modern houses, these men sleep on the ground under the open sky in the middle of this stunning nature. They have no sense of greed whatsoever, except to partake of the simple lifestyle. They are happy and healthy in the life they inherited from their ancestors and the customs and traditions which are derived from the values of Islam. <laughs> Ahmed bin Mohammed is singing to the camels. He has loved camels since he was a child. You always see him speaking to the virtues of the camels. He is one of the herdsmen who have extensive experience guiding and directing the camels to the fertile pastures. When the herdsmen hear the flies buzzing about, it is a sign of proximity of the most fertile grazing areas, and quickly they guide the camels to that range. We have lived among them away from modernity, in their traveling system, in the midst of these herds of camels in these picturesque forests. This is the program today for sheep herding the camels in this valley for a period of more than two weeks. If the shepherds go away to a pasture, such as this valley, away from water springs and the camels become thirsty, the camel shepherd does not allow them to go for water for fear that they may get lost. After that, they go back slowly, but surely towards the coastal plain passing through the same valleys, taking time for resting there for a week. At that point, the camels walk to Arzat Rivula to drink. Here is Sheikh Ahmed in the morning of the herd's watering day, singing to the camels and calling them to the water source in a special way to give the good news. This way is passed down from their ancestors and is called locally Hebat. It is a custom that some herdsmen reach the brook earlier to raise the level of water by placing some stories as a dam so that the camels comfortably drink. Drinking places for camels are the running springs because they flow the pure water. When camels arrive to drink, 
the news spread among the people who are longing to see them. The locals come here from all over the region to greet the herdsmen who have been accompanying the camels and they offer help to them for anything needed. When the camels drink and their thirst is quenched, they produce abundant milk. At this point, the camels are milked and their milk is served to everyone who attends the event. After about two hours, the camels are divided into groups to go and graze in other areas in lesser numbers because the subsequent pastures don't have the capacity for this much grazing pressure from the camels and in this way, the natural environment will be protected. I'm <laughs> gonna